Okay. In this video, we're going to get into the conscious versus the subconscious mind, hypnosis, and the critical factor. So let me go share my screen. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. All right. Conscious versus the subconscious mind. Now, the conscious mind is a very logical, analytical, critical part of the mind that's responsible for things like short-term memory and making logical decisions, for analyzing things. Think of it like this, if you can see me in the video. This little piddly thing here, it's like the conscious mind, or people will say the conscious mind is the tip of the iceberg. Again, very logical, analytical, critical part of the mind. We then have the subconscious part of the mind, which is that bigger part, or as people say, it's the base of the iceberg that expands downwards. The subconscious mind is the control center of your mind. It's like that computer of your mind. It operates everything, and in that part of the mind, it stores every single thing we've ever heard, seen, felt, and experienced, learned, read, smelled, and tasted. And based on that information, it composes your beliefs, behaviors, habits, feelings, sensations, emotions, personality, and programs of sorts. Make sure you get this. I'm going to quiz you on this later. No. <laughs> I'll say that again. That part of your mind stores every single thing you've ever heard, seen, felt, and experienced, learned, read, smelled, and tasted. And based on that, it composes your beliefs, behaviors, habits, feelings, sensations, emotions, personality, and programs of sorts within reason, okay? I say it, it composes and stores all of your memories. <clears throat> However, it stores your perception of memories. Let me explain this. Um, a lot of research has been done with the brain and, and how we pattern memory. And we will think something is true based on our interpretation of the event. And even though that never really happened, we still think it's true. I'll give you an example of this. One of my very good friends, we were in her basement and I told a joke and we all laughed. And she went a year telling people she came up with a joke. Now, guess what? Somebody videotaped me telling this woman the joke. She went a whole year telling everybody she told the joke and that she came up with the joke. So in one of those little apps, like the Time Hop app on your phone that says, this is what you did a year ago. This is what you did two years ago, three years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is what it was like right before you were happy, you know, <laughs> reminds you where your roots were. Anyway, a year after that happened, uh, that video popped up in my phone um, and I, I watched the video and I'm like, I did tell the joke. I, I knew I told this joke and I sent her the video. And she literally said, Dan, I can't believe I really remembered it as I told the joke. She goes, this, she goes, this changed my entire life and everything I thought to be true. And she's honest. It really did change your perception. Sometimes things we think are true, they're just our interpretation of them. Okay, We can get very philo philosophical here, but, but we're not going to. So the subconscious mind is where we want to get a message to in order for it to take effect for hypnosis to occur. Okay, And then... In order to get to the subconscious mind, conscious, subconscious, in order to get to the con subconscious mind, excuse me, in order to get to the subconscious, we need to bypass what we call the critical factor. The critical factor is like a drawbridge, a gate, or a wall. It's like the gatekeeper that will determine what gets into the subconscious mind and what doesn't, what gets rejected out. It's that filter, okay? So in order to get a person to develop a new program, whoop, the critical factor has to be bypassed, and then the program gets in there, and then the critical factor goes back up. So here's, here are some ways to bypass the critical factor. There are actually five principles that bypass the critical factor, and then there's hypnosis, which does it naturally. Number one, age. When we are younger, up until about the age of six, or seven, our critical factor is very flexible. So we don't have a formed critical factor yet. So if we went up to a uh, three-year-old little Sally and we told her a couple of times, this pen, Sally, it's no longer blue. It's now red. She's going to look at you and Sally's going to say, but why? You're going to say, because I said so. Okay. So she goes back to kindergarten. They ask her to pick up the red pen and she picks up the blue one. Now, one of two things happens. The school psychologist will call Sally's parents and say Sally's psychotic <laughs> or she's colorblind, okay? So children don't need a lot of proof 
in order to change a pattern, habit, or program. This is also where we accumulate a lot of bullshit from childhood. So if something traumatic happened from childhood, it's going to stick, okay? Um, it's going to get in the subconscious mind much easier. Repetition. Anytime a message is repeated so much, it knocks on that critical factor until it knocks it down and gets in the subconscious mind. This is why it often takes a long time for therapists to be effective in changing habits or behaviors because they have to repeat that change along uh, a lot. You've heard possibly it takes 21 repetitions in order for something to become habitual when you're doing it right. It doesn't, and I'll share that with you. Heightened emotion is another thing that bypasses a critical factor of the conscious mind to establish that heightened state of receptivity. Anytime you experience a heightened emotion, it could be positive or negative, you are going into a more receptive state. Programs form much easier because it's naturally bypassing the critical factor. Authority, trust, and credibility. If you have a coach, a mentor, or even a lot of, excuse me as I wipe my nose here, a lot of religious figures have that higher level of authority, trust, credibility, and power. Doctors as well. So when you go into that situation, if someone's an expert or you have a coach or a mentor or something that everything you take, uh, everything they say is like the gospel, you're going to believe it. Stories and metaphors, also another natural way to bypass a person's critical factor to get into their subconscious mind. Why? Because when we're being told a story or a metaphor, we're not thinking about a message that's being conveyed to us. And the, the uh, final one is hypnosis. Hypnosis is a natural way. It's a ritualistic way. Hypnosis, let me say this again, it's a ritualistic way to bypass the critical factor of the conscious mind to make changes, to help people change programs. So that's what hypnosis is. It's just a bypass of the critical factor create, to create a new behavior or better programs or to make alterations to existing programs that are in there. So with that said, putting this all together, you know, we're building the foundation. Take notes with these videos, go through them so that way you can have informed conversations. So that way now you know the reality of hypnosis, what it is, what it isn't, you know, the myths and misconceptions by now, why we are a hypnotist, why hypnosis works, because it takes effect in the subconscious part of the mind, which is responsible for change. So now that you know all this, we're going to start getting into more objective things like signs of hypnosis, what we're doing with hypnosis and everything like that. So with that said, we are going to uh, stop sharing the screen there. There we go. I'm back. <laughs> and as always, be well, do good, and be true to who you are. I'll see you in the next video.